Good afternoon. I'm Buddy Carter, a volunteer here at the center, and occasionally I do something artistic, not often because I'm just not an artist. But years ago, I was cutting some wisteria, and mixed in with that was some grapevine, and I thought to myself, there was so much of it that I could make them into wreaths, so I did. Well, then once you get a wreath made out of grapevine or wisteria or honeysuckle, you've got to do something with it. So I started making decorative wreaths for myself. And that's a good thing about making one from scratch because you're doing what you like and not what somebody else is showing you that you should like. So let's see what kind of things you can work with to make a wreath. There are all kinds of, of things. Um, these are really cheap this time of year. I got this one at a big box store, cost less than $3, over $3 tax. tax. And when you use one of those, you've got to fluff them up. So I've done that with this one. And when you do that, I found it's best to get everything to the front so that you've got a flat side on one side so that when you hang it on your door, it's not gonna bounce out. It's gonna be flat against the door. So that takes care of those. There's this one that I haven't done much with. So we're not gonna deal with that one at all today. I have thought some, 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 th some things, but I haven't gone through with working on it and to see how it works. And if I was gonna do it, I would use some things like this with it, I think, mm -hmm. and try to work in these sections and poof them out. And, but that's, up here right now and not out here for you to see. So there's that one. The grapevine one. This one is a tightly woven one. This one's a loose, looser one. This one looks more like something I might have made than this one. There's the pressed straw ones. And they come wrapped in clear plastic and they also come wrapped in green plastic. And my preference, if you're gonna do something with fresh greenery, is to use one that's wrapped in green. These are good for fall, because you don't have to wrap it. You've already got your makings of fall colors in, in the light tan and dark tan in the, in the wreath that's set. Then there's styrofoam like this one. This one was white. No, this one was green. I'm spraying it red. It takes about, I don't know, five coats, six coats. And it does collapse. But the front does show its, hold its shape. And the reason I spray it is because I use that and a hot glue gun on this one. And in the 1970s, all these little kits came out about making Christmas ornaments. So we did, Betsy, my wife, did these and painted them and they've sat in boxes for years and I just got the idea one day, well, you could do that. I sprayed this one green and then just started gluing them. But you have to keep on gluing because they do pop off. But got a space right there and I have to find that little character. But it made an interesting wreath and a fun wreath. It is. And a good wreath if you've got grandchildren, little grandchildren, they loved it when they were small, which they aren't anymore. And here's some examples of the clear wrap straw wreath with a fall motif. And in the far chair is, is a grapevine one. Tools of the trade, besides these, wire cutters, scissors. If you're working with live greenery, you need a pair of snips, glue. I'm trying regular glue rather than hot glue gun. I saw, I'll show you, a picture on the internet. And that's a good place to start with your ideas. 
just to look up wreaths. And I saw this one made with an embroidery hoop. Mm -hmm. And when they did the explanation, they said they didn't use a hot glue gun, they used something called power tack glue. Well, I saw this Wednesday, I think. Power tack glue is not something local stores carry. So I got these two, I got E6000 and this Gorilla, and I'm using the E6000. So I started working on that with this embroidery hoop. It wasn't too expensive. But what I realized quickly was it's gonna be a time consuming task because you've gotta let that little bit set up before you bring it around to attach it up here. But again, you just, eat lunch, watch some TV, play solitaire on the computer. <laughs> All the things we've been doing for the last six months anyway. So that, that was working, that's gonna that's work with that 6,000 because that's holding pretty good. And then I'll glue it up here and bring it around and then put some more pieces on. That's why you have these things because just go to your big stores and, or Michaels or wherever you buy your artificial stuff and you just cut off what you need. That's pretty, I haven't seen that one. I got this one at some point, not this year. And I don't know where I got it. Uh -oh. Evidently I just saw it it's and liked it and it was different. And I thought, well, somewhere I might use that. I didn't have anything in mind. It looks more natural. Probably Michael's, I'm thinking. And it's probably was in the sales stuff because that's what, you know, you don't want to put a fortune into anything. <laughs> so look for the sales. So uh, what else are we doing? If you're doing live greenery, these things are great. I got these at Walmart. It's just a U-shaped pen. Floor's tape. And I'm thinking that might come in handy on that wire, this thing. And I know the florist wire will come in handy with this because there's no way to stick things in this. You're gonna have to hold them in with something else. Paper clips, maybe just for a temporary hold. Straight pins and safety pins. Also various, various, various ribbons. All kinds of ribbons. Again, Michael's always has a sale. So I've got mostly fall here. So burlap. More natural stuff. Yeah, we'll do a little demonstration here with before we get into anything. And this is juniper. It smells like cedar. So we're going to do the start of a Christmas greenery wreath. And I could not find, either small, but I could not find a green wrap, as I said earlier. And that's really what you want when you work with greenery, because then you don't have to worry about the background showing through. It's going to be green anyway. But I wanted to give you an idea of how to start these. Start these on the inside. You take your U-shaped pin, you take your piece of greenery, shove that all the way in there. Then you take a second piece, and you, you decide whether you're gonna have it go clockwise or counterclockwise, how you're gonna do that, but once you start, that's the way you go with the whole thing. You do this piece so you'll cover up the stem of that piece. When we started, Betsy and I started making boxwood wreaths years and years ago. They only had those, you remember the wooden picks 
of all pieces of wood. They're sharp on one end, all sprayed green with a wire wrapped around it. We had to take every piece and wrap that wire around these and then stick those wooden picks in to the form. These are good for old people because of arthritis. <laughs> you don't have to wrap. That's, that piece is really too big, but I think I could use it. I think I could pin it in two places. Pull the pin and pin them both. And the same thing. Again. And the bow so you got the circle going. And you can see how it's going to go. It's a little more tricky when you get to the outside, but again, then that depends on the look you want. If you want a tight look, you're going to have to pin both ends of your piece so you can get it to go this way. But if you want a more natural, then you pin about the bottom about halfway up and let it go on and stick out. And it just depends on the look you want. And it also depends on what material you're using. If you're using something like this, you're probably going to get the more irregular outside look anyway. If you're using something like boxwood, you'll get a smoother right. form, uh, shape on it. So, and you just start somewhere. If you've worked with these before, you know that these are just stuck on there. It's like little pegs and then the ends of these so you can flip them around and I don't have to look at the veins on the back of the leaves you can actually look at the leaves themselves and then just stick them in there now, what I do first with them though I hold it up and see if it's got what the shape is if it's round it's okay you can really start anywhere this was a little oblong so then you got to decide whether you want it oblong that way or oblong this way. And I'm going to do it this way. Then you just start sticking. And they'll hold in there. And at some point, while you're sticking, You'll decide, your brain will tell you what you like and what you don't like about it. See how it came off? You just put it right back on. Do you want it a whole wreath all the way around, decorated? Do you want it half? Just up maybe one side. One like those. But it's kind of U-shaped. That's the other thing that's great about doing something for yourself. You never can find the tools you want. Even though you just put it down. And I'm just wrapping this ribbon around it. The bad part of it is you have to keep it tight. This ribbon has wire in the edges. It's what I had. Unwired works better if you're going to do this. But It makes a pretty form when you get through, and then you can stick, since it's already decorated, it doesn't take much more to embellish it than, than what you've got. Just a few 
Christmas greenery things. Maybe a figure that you could glue in here, white dove or something. And you're done with a Christmas wreath.